All right, so we're going to look at how to live edit 360 by 180 images in the iPad version of Photo. Now we've got our unmapped 360 image here. So first we need to enter live projection. And to do that, we go to the command menu up here, then go to projections and choose equirectangular projection. Okay, so panning around, our primary step here can be to straighten up an area of the projection. Now it seems to be pretty level, pretty even as we go all the way around, but perhaps this area here we could just do with leveling up a bit. So we can do this quite simply by scrubbing straighten down here until the area appears to be level and then release. Okay. And there don't appear to be any other areas, so we're good to go. Next, we've got some in-painting to do. Now you can see me over here triggering the 360 camera with a smartphone. So we'll tighten up the field of view, or FOV, down here. Just pan, and then we'll switch across here to the in-painting brush. Okay, my settings are pretty appropriate. I'll just decrease the brush width a bit, and then I'll just paint over myself like so and then release. Okay, so I've disappeared. There are a couple of areas. In fact, we can just pinch to zoom in even further here and perhaps decrease the brush width a bit. I'll just try going over this area again just to see if I can get a better looking result. Okay, now as I've zoomed in, I want to return to fit to screen. To do that, all I need to do is two finger tap twice. So a quick double tap with two fingers. And we've got some lens flares we need to edit out. Now you'll notice that when I switch to a tool such as the in-painting brush, your ability to control the live projection disappears. Not a problem. To get it back, all we do is tap the command menu again and just go to projections and equirectangular projection once again. And we've got our controls back here. So I can scrub the field of view slider all the way to 90 to see my entire scene. And these are the lens flares I was talking about, so we'll decrease our field of view again. Just pan to center them in the frame. And once again, select the in-painting brush. And we'll just go over the lens flares one by one. Okay, maybe increase the brush width for that bigger lens flare there like so. Okay, that's a good enough result. So once again, we go to our command menu projections, equirectangular projection to get our controls back. And then just pan around. So next we're going to tackle the leg shadows of the tripod here. So once again, I'll just move in with the field of view here, just to get a a tighter lock on what I need to do here. And of course, once again, select the in-painting brush. I can perhaps use a smaller brush width this time. So what I'm going to do is just paint over each leg individually. Okay, and the middle leg. Okay, so in this instance, as I go to tackle the last leg, it's actually copied a bit of this leg into where I in-painted over the middle leg. So what we'll do is just tackle the final leg first. Okay, and this will then enable us to in-paint over the areas that are left. Okay, now we've just got the shadow left on the gravel here, which we can just about see. So once again, we'll re-enter our live projection, like so, just zoom in, and once again, select the in-painting brush. Just brush over this shadow here and release. Okay, good. So now we've just got the base of the tripod to tackle. 
once again re-enter the projection and this time I'll position it looking down at the head of the tripod. So I'll try and tackle this in one go using the in-painting brush, but I suspect we're going to need to do some cloning as well. We shall find out. Let's select the in-painting brush again. I'll use a much larger brush width this time. And then just paint over the tripod head and release. All right, yeah, it's as I suspected. We've got some blurriness here because it's copied from surrounding areas that aren't particularly sharp. So what we can do to fix this is just tap the retouching tools fly out here, select the clone brush. So what we can do is tap hold over an area to define it as the source area. And before I start cloning, I'll just decrease the brush width. That should do. And then all we need to do is just brush over the blurry areas to sample from the sharper areas. Again, a nice small brush width should allow us to keep this under control and just retouch this area. Slowly just making sure that we're only really going over the areas that are affected. Because going over areas that are already sharp is just a bit of a waste, really. Okay, so sample from there, let's just brush over there. And we've just got this area down here. And that looks like it, I think. Oh no, just another area here. Okay, that should do. So again, as before, we can re-enter our projection. Let's just pan around. And we've got one final thing to do. We've got some visible seams from where the camera hasn't merged the two fisheye lenses very well. So to tackle this, again, it's a job for the in-painting brush. So I'll just tap the retouching tools fly out, select the in-painting brush, and we want a brush width that's just kind of bigger than the seam, like so. So we're sort of brushing around the surrounding areas of the seam as well as the seam itself. This should just ensure a better blend between the left and the right lens areas. Okay, good. So we've got the other side. Once again, re-enter the projection, move around. Okay, it's not actually so bad this side, but it can do with retouching anyway. Select the in-painting brush tool, brush down and release. And right, that's it. So once we're finished editing, we can clear the projection. So once again, go to the command menu, go to projections, and this time choose clear projection. And now we're left with our unmapped 360 image, ready to be exported and uploaded or used in other software that will apply the 360 projection. Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to check out the other tutorials.